We had Jackie with Damian Priest, and he said, man, Drew likes to talk and be real, so here's some real talk. He says, when Drew talks about being when he was a man around here, well, that's when everybody was struggling. And then everybody got back to 100%, and he couldn't beat anybody anymore. And whether I cash in tonight at the Rumble, I'm going to be the champion. Drew's going to get his punishment tonight. Drew showed up and tried to bring him more merch money, and Priest was like, now's not the time, dude. Bronson Reed did a promo. He wants Jay Uso next week. We had, interesting match. Yeah. It's interesting. And then we had Chad Gable and Ivar. This Ivar man. We, He's I mean, a great worker. Him and Chad, it was just like, this match was so much fun. It's a great and match, yeah. They had some spots at the end. Like Ivar, he goes up top to try a moonsault. Chad avoids the moonsault. Hits a bridging German suplex on this giant dude. Gets a near fall off the ropes. Yeah, not just the not just no. That was no. This that was before. Yeah. Then they fight up top. Yeah, Ivar dumps him on his head. He goes up for the uh, the the moon salt, and Chad uh, he like counters out of it into. I mean, it was crazy this thing that they did. They the, he, the, he the, slipped the behind. Suplex. Yeah, he slipped behind on a superplex to hit a middle rope German. It was yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. And then finally, Ivar dumped him on his head after Valhalla distracted. Hit the Doom Salt got the pin. This was very good. And it was great because at the beginning, there was not a lot of heat. And they were going nuts at the end. So they got that crowd just by working great. Well, Chad Gable is great. He's, he's you know, they have him doing like, um, like a, a very heavy comedy gimmick. And I think it works against him. Um, well, I know it works against him. He's so much better than the, the what they give him. And Ivar, it's weird for Ivar because it's like they're never going to push him past a certain level, but they probably could. should. They probably could because he's really, he's a he's really talented. Yeah. We had the Cody Punk promo, and at first they shook hands, and then Punk said, "Well, let's see if we're still friends on Sunday." And Cody said, what do you want to talk about? Punk said, I want to talk about your dad. 2007, he called me, said, this uh, this Cody's going to Ohio Valley. Can you keep an eye on him? I didn't think I was the right man for the job, but your dad asked me for the favor, so I did it. But it wasn't a hard job. I'm proud of you. But Saturday, I'm going to have to break a promise because I'm going to punch you in the face and throw you out and win that Royal Rumble. I'm going to go on to the main event of WrestleMania. That got booed, by the way. Yeah. It was an interesting crowd. At first, the crowd was way, way more for Punk. By the end... You know, um, I felt that they were mixed. I didn't really sense more for Cody, but as it went, it was it was gradually going. Um, well, Punk was had far more of a heel edge in this yeah. than Cody did. Cody was his normal, you know, full on baby face. Yeah. But you know, Punk was he was digging that knife in, and so yeah, more than more than Cody was. Yeah. Punk said, "Your father was an all time legend." He had the burden of his last name, but man, you got out of that shadow. You did it. But he says, you know, my father wasn't a legend. My father was blue collar, an electrician. So it's ironic. I am more of the American dream than you are. And Cody says, well, let's talk about that pipe bomb. You said a lot of shit. I was inspired. But then you left. And when you left, you really left. You didn't pass the torch. You dropped it. Hey, you know who picked it up? Me. And everything that you talked about doing, I actually did. You talked but i walked and that makes me more cm punk than you that was actually a really good line so now punk's real mad takes his jacket off and he says uh you know right when you're about to finish your story a much bigger superstar is going to show up and take it all away from you and i'm talking about me cody says wow looking out for me again my dad always said courage is being scared to death but saddling up anyway I have one direction. It is forward. And in the rumble, that direction is going to go through you. So he goes to leave. Cody sp or, uh, Punk spins him around. They have a big stare down. Dueling chance. And then it's over. It's an excellent segment. These two guys can talk. Let me tell you. Yeah. Yep. We had uh, Hulk Hogan, Mattel figures plug. And then uh, Indian Candice versus Shane and Zoe Stark. What a death segment they got put in. No heat whatsoever. Zoe hit the Z360 on Candice Pinder. And then Kane and Katana hit the ring. They're facing off against uh, 
damage control on Friday, and the winners get Shayna and Zoe. So that's the uh, women's booking. Mm -hmm. Drew did a promo for the main event. He addressed Damian Priest and just said, you know what, I'm sick of people downplaying what I did during the pandemic. Although he did not say pandemic. But he said, it's the most proud I've ever been in my career. I've had people tell me we literally saved their lives. Damien isn't taking me out tonight. He says there's only room for one chosen one, and I am him. So uh, we had a segment backstage with uh, Nikki, or Natty and Tegan, Damage Control, and they're screaming at each other, and Pierce told everyone to shut up, save it for the Rumble. Yelled at Bailey for causing chaos, and she said, well, you know, they're going to win the tag titles, so you're going to see a lot of us. And so they leave, and uh, guess who shows up? Hook! Gen- no, Jinder. No, nah, it was Jinder. And Jinder says, I... He didn't I, say much of anything. Well, he goes, I injured your champion, so I need to know what's next for me. And yeah. Pierce says, well, we can go talk in the office. So then the main event was Damian Priest, Drew McIntyre, and uh, it was a good match. They uh, did this I spot... Thought- I thought, um, I guess there was a lot of nonsense at the end. I thought it kind of took took away from the match. Um, they worked hard, you know. I mean, they definitely, you know, I don't know. I, it, I, thought, it would be, I thought it would be better. Well, they're having a match, and they go right to commercial. And then as soon as they come back, it's like there's about a minute or two, and then here's Truth with all of Priest's money. Right. And Priest is pissed, and he shoves him down. So Truth figures, well, I guess he wants me to put the money in his briefcase, but he can't open it. And so he gets up on the apron. He starts screaming like, what's the password for the briefcase? So Drew punches him. The money goes flying. And then Priest hits Drew with South of Heaven, but the ref's getting rid of Truth. And so Priest tossed Truth out of the ring, turns around, gets claymored and pinned. And, you know, I, I get like, we got to waste some time between, you know, December, Christmas, and the Rumble and everything. But this Truth thing jumped the shark with me tonight. It's like let's get this yeah, was, thing it, over it was, with. It, it was it was it was weak. The crowd loves him though, and and he is they funny. do. So and it's like is, pull the trigger and like do something or. Well, the, he did. He Priest did throw him out of the ring and everything. I mean, it it was more of a, you know, a, well, a little bit more of a of a breakup type thing. I I don't necessarily think he jumped the shark, but I do think that his being involved in this just kind of turned this grudge match that they've been slowly building up for yes. months into into a cartoon. Yeah, so if you're doing why, something with that's truth. Why, that's, why, that's why I did not think, the, I did not like the match. I mean, like, the work of the two guys, yes, very good, but I thought the overall match, it was all cartoon by the end, and it's like they were in this serious grudge, two big dudes that, you know, we know it's been building up, and then it's all about, you know, our truth going in there and telling jokes. It's almost like when our truth came in with Priest earlier, and he goes, "It's not the time." It's like that match was not the time. And I'm a fan of our truth, but it was not the time and the place to do it. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.